I want to talk about this uh, project that we were working on. Uh, this is the George W. Bush Presidential Center in Dallas, Texas. And the charge to us was to recreate the Texas prairie similar to what it was, what it is on the Bush Ranch. They're not egocentric at all. <laughs> well, we're all the same way about our property, right? So they want to reestablish this. The people I was working with, the head on the project was Ted Hartzik from uh, Olson Associates in Kansas City, James Satillo, uh, working with the Van Balkenberg Associates in uh, New York City, um, the person, the people who are responsible for the High Line in New York City. And so the High Line in New York City is being maintained strictly with compost and compost tea, nothing else. Um, after 9-11, when the Twin Towers went down, uh, we had already been working with the pe people in Battery Park City. And all of that property was impacted by the drywall, by the being buried. There, are six, there were 6,000 trees in Battery Park City, all of which were impacted to some extent, some totally buried in the <clears throat> ash coming down from the Twin Towers out to the tip of Manhattan Island where it was three inches deep out at the tip. So this is the park that's right there, downtown Manhattan, completely impacted. Think of the salt going into the soil. About um, five, six days after the Twin Towers came down, it rained all that salt going into the soil. So as we uncovered the trees, all of the trees were defoliated, all of the shrubs, the grass looked horrific. So what do you do? Most um, arboriculturalists said the only thing you can do is to mow all those trees down, take out all of the shrubs, replace everything. But we were already working with Battery Park City. We already had them on a program of compost and compost tea. Been working there for a good 25 years. And uh, we said instead, uh, we just have to go out there and complex the salts with a really good compost, with the humic acid in the compost, resuscitates the biology that had been killed. Out of the six, <clears throat> out of the 6,000 trees in Battery Park City, only six of them died. what biology does for you. So how do we have to follow the directions of people who don't understand organisms? So all done with compost and compost tea, compost that we make on Manhattan Island, right there at the tip. Um, James is now working with the St. Louis Arches. So all of the new park going in underneath the arches in St. Louis is all being done with compost, compost tea with the proper biology. And so here we are, the Bush Presidential Center, um, in Dallas, Texas. And of course, the biology being done, the assessments being done by the laboratory in Corvallis. This is what we started out with. The Bush family comes to us and says, we have had two companies try to put in native prairie on this site, and they have not been successful. Uh, and we looked at this and went, really? S somebody tried to do something here? <laughs> because... Uh, uh, it's not making it for me. This is an urban landscape. This used to be a parking lot. There are all kinds of big trucks and big diesel and all kinds of oil spills. And God, you just couldn't, you know, the smell coming out of this was like, oh boy. So how are we going to turn that dirt with no life, no organic matter? I'll show you what that dirt looks like as we first started to try to dig it up. Well, how are we going to take that and turn it back into something that will support a native Texas prairie within one year? This is September of 2013. The end date on the project is September 2014. How are you going to do this in a year? This was in the fall, September. So at least we're starting at the right time. We can do a lot through the winter time period with the biology to really fix this soil. There's the first pile of compost that came in. We went uh, all over Texas and um, developed a working relationship with a couple composting yards where they actually did the compost according to our specs, our specifications. So it's coming good, aerobic, nice, rich, dark brown, really good humus, um, humic acid in there. Now, we're not going to leave this, um, this, it's not a prairie, flat like this. So we are going to do a lot of permaculture. 
We're going to put in swales. We're going to put in hills. We're going to pay attention to the hydrology of the system. We're going to have lateral movement of the water across the landscape. But that's only part of the project. You are not going to be successful if that's all you do. We have to get the biology back in there, and we're going to have to baby it to make certain that it comes along. As we started trying to dig into this, this was concrete. This was over 1,000 pounds per square inch in order to be able to pound a front end loader and get the soil to break up. Is that soil? (laughs) I'm not sure I'd even call it dirt. No, it was just, oh, have we got work to do. So, yeah, we are getting out there with the big equipment and trying to break this up and, you know, mix the compost into this material, get some plants started. And so I'll show you some of that process. So in that previous picture, that previous picture was taken from right up here. So you can see the amount of land movement. We are doing a lot to get valleys and hills and change it from a flat lasered landscape into something that's more realistic. All of these trees are being planted into that soil, so we are being very careful about having our B horizon, our A horizon, getting an organic matter layer in there. All the trees are treated with compost tea soaked. That root ball is soaked in the proper biology with the mycorrhizal fungi because these trees were coming with absolutely no mycorrhizal fungi on those root systems. Very chemically dependent plants. we got to reverse that so they have a chance of surviving. So as things are being moved around, no engineered soil on this site at all, we would not allow it because engineered soil is just sand, silt, clay, mostly sand. I think we already had enough sand here in Texas. We didn't need to be bringing in more. What we needed to do was be putting the organic matter in. So that brown color of this soil is the mix of the site soil with the compost. And so already we're starting to build structure. As soon as that goes down, structure is being built by the organisms that we're making certain is in that, um, in the soil. And now we are starting to apply compost teas in various places. So the liquid form, you can see the um, shrubs being planted. Those shrubs were planted early in 2014. And you'll see the end in just a little bit. Kelp, this is kelp going out on the ground, not fertilizer. So lots of fungal foods going into all these places because the site soil had a little bit of bacteria left in it, and that was it. So we've got to put everything else back into the system. So getting things just as fungal as we possibly can. And yes, the building is going apace. So that is the Bush Library on the Presidential Center. Um, And you can just see more of that. Um, It is a decomposable fabric that we're using here, so we can leave it in place and the fungi will come along and decompose it. So, you know, we're terracing a lot of places. Once the plants start growing, you don't notice the terraces. So it looks like a, you know, totally natural grassland. But you can see how close we are. This is the outskirts of Dallas. The skyline of Dallas is right out in that direction. And I'll show you that when we get done. There we are, September of 2014. One year. And you saw what that looked like while we were building, getting that soil, getting the proper biology so that these plants would all grow. We seeded in um, all of the seeds had been soaked in a compost tea with the proper mycorrhizal fungi for the native species. Native plants very rarely require the same mycorrhizal fungi as our European crop species. You have to find the mycorrhizal fungi from the native grassland. Luckily, we had the bush ranch to go back to. We had a source of those mycorrhizal fungi that we could go collect and then make certain we were getting the the correct mycorrhizal fungi on those seeds so that approximately six months later, pictures of that native grassland. There's the skyline of Dallas in the background. You can see one of those buildings that was right next to the site. You can see just the edge of the library right there. But this has no weeds. All of the native species are coming back. You couldn't ask for something more gorgeous than this. Native grassland species. The Lady Bird Johnson uh, Wildflower Center sent people here to assay 
to see how how successful we were at re, um, bringing back the uh, native grassland, and they said they had not they have not seen as um, true to life native, um, Texas prairie ever on uh, in this shorter period of time. This is one year. So somebody wants to tell you it can't be done. It's not possible to bring back native prairies in this shorter period of time. Send them to Ted because we've done it. Um, this is the boulevard coming up. This kind of exemplifies some of that layering that we were doing. So we want to make certain that the water will be moving along this avenue properly. We don't want water logging to be occurring. So we've got the hydrology moving in the right direction. We're coming in with layers of that composted site soil. We've got a little bit of sand going in in certain places because we want the drainage moving properly. You have to understand um, hydrology as well as what do the plants need in terms of the biology and rebuilding the layers, the horizons in the soil. And so this is two, two and a half months after that last picture, and the trees have just gone in, of course, inoculated with all the right organisms and the mycorrhizal fungi. This is a mix of about five, six species of different um, tex native Texas grasses. What you're seeing coming up here is the buffalo grass and the Texas grandma. It's a black grandma grass native to this part of the world. There is no irrigation. On all of this project, no irrigation because it wasn't necessary. You rebuild structure in the soil with these organisms, and every drop of dew moves into the soil. We need to have these grasses to be the surfaces to condense the dew every morning, every evening. So we get all of that water back into the soil. Working with Jeff Lawton in the deserts of the Middle East, this is exactly the same process we had to follow. Yep, Jeff got in there and doing the swales and making sure that we have the um, topography that we require. But in order to make certain that the water is going to move into the system, we had to have those grasses and the proper biology building structure in the soil. So um, all of the dew that fell either moved down into the soil through the stem or fell off the leaf into the pond. And so within uh, one year, uh, working in Saudi Arabia, for example, near Dubai and Jordan, um, we have oases. So irrigation is not required in these kinds of systems. This is a semi-arid grassland. It, it, enough water falls. As long as we capture and ca catch it and get it going deep down into the soil, protect our soil surface from evaporation, so in the dry summer period, yes, many of those grasses will go dormant, but they are protecting your soil surface from losing water through evaporation. Our soil is dark. Dormant grass material is a light tan color. So we reduce the amount of loss of water if we can protect that soil surface through that dry summer period. We've done similar things with um, Christmas trees just to, you know, again, it's compost tea going onto half of these um, Christmas tree lines. Some of them, a whole compost tea going out. Some of them, half was compost tea, half was the chemical, and then some were completely chemical. And after that first growing season, you can see the change in the root system where we put the proper biology in versus where we didn't have the good biology. These are root systems that are stressed. They're searching for water. They're searching for nutrients and they cannot find them. You cannot put on enough fertilizer on a day-by-day -day basis to keep these plants healthy. So these seedlings grew two years worth of um, growth the next year. They went through two years worth of growth. The next year, again, two years worth of growth. So when these seedlings were five years old, they could be harvested and sold. It took eight years for these seedlings to reach the same stage where they were large enough to be sold. So, you know, lots of examples of success. We need to get the coverage, and that's one of the, especially above ground, we need to protect the above ground parts of our plants. 
with the organisms that are in compost, that are in the tea. We have to make certain that the diseases don't even know your plants there. There are no bare leaf surfaces. There are no bare root surfaces. Your plant is putting exudates out of every part of its body in order to grow these organisms. If we've been killing these organisms off, perhaps through no fault of your own, your neighbor is spraying, dust, problems, killing the organisms off, we got to put them back on so our plants can stay healthy. So we've talked about all of this. I think I can zoom along because I've got a whopping big 10 minutes left. Um, We have to make certain the leaf surface is covered, top and bottom. Where does most of the disease actually start on your plants? Where do the insects attack first? It's the bottom side of the leaf. So if you have a choice between getting the compost tea on the bottom or the top of your plant, pick the bottom. Get those nozzles where they're spraying up. So we're covering those leaf surfaces, top and bottom. And then you think about your leaf surface covered like this. A disease-causing fungus, a spore of a disease-causing fungus coming along and falling on this leaf, it can't make it to the leaf. There are no exudates for it to germinate and grow. There are protective organisms that are going to eat that spore, eat that spore if it germinates. Long before it can get anywhere close to your plant tissue, that disease or pest organism is going to be taken care of. If we've been applying pesticides, if we've been using even the coppers and the sulfurs that were allowed in the organic world, you're killing the organisms on the leaf surface. And of course, all the exudates coming out, lots of food for your diseases and your pests. There's lots of spaces for the diseases and pests to find the infection sites and cause damage. So we need to cover those leaf surfaces. When we're looking at a bacterial cell, Bacteria make glues. So I talked about that before, where they make glues to stick themselves to these surfaces. So they're attached to your plant. If it's a disease-causing organism, there's the infection site. This bacterial disease-causing organism has to find exactly the right set of chemicals, lecithins, in order to attach and start pushing additional bacteria and infection thread into that into the host plant. This is a dead organism. Doesn't quite know it yet, but it's on its way out because there's nothing to protect against this disease. Where we have to be working is to make certain that all of those infection sites are occupied by somebody beneficial. We have to get those beneficial organisms covering those leaf surfaces again. We have to make certain that it's the good guys that are glued to our leaves, to the surfaces, So there is no way the disease can find a place to attack. All of the exudates coming out of this plant need to be used by our beneficial organisms that should be lined up, completely covering the surfaces of our plants. So I want to go through another little experiment real quick. Last one, I think. Um, We had a vineyard close to us in Oregon, about a two-acre vineyard. They had lost all of the berries um, because of a late frost that year. So when we came to them and said, we'd like to run this experiment where we want to show how beneficial compost tea is. How much tea do you have to have on those leaf surfaces? What's a really important factor? So we went out into that vineyard and we covered everything in that vineyard. uh, 70% coverage with gray mold, Botrytis scenario. Huge problem in Oregon. So... Made certain the disease was there. It was starting to germinate. It was starting the disease process. And then we came along and sprayed just water on one section of the vineyard. 10% coverage with our compost tea organisms. Is that going to be enough? Can we prevent problems if we get at least 10% coverage on that leaf surface? Well, does it need to be 50% coverage? Or how about 70% coverage? How about 100% coverage? Well, how much coverage do we have to have? How well do we have to get these leaves covered? So we came out the next day and applied 100% coverage. So how do you detect uh, coverage with your microscope? So we're looking at that leaf surface, and you can see just how thick everything is covered with all those wonderful bacteria. And look at all the different species of bacteria in there. Isn't that great? All the different morphologies. Woo! 
And we got some fungi. What we're seeing is that we have to have at least 5% of the surface covered by fungi. The rest of it can be covered by bacteria. Absolutely no disease. And so when we were looking at that leaf, this was a leaf picked off of those, uh, that from that part of the vineyard that was covered 100% after three weeks. No botrytis, no problem. We have completely dealt with the disease by covering the leaf surfaces. So whether it's a disease, fungal disease, a bacterial disease, a virus, um, an insect, these are the kinds of the results that we need to be seeing. So can we get away with just covering it 70%? So here the, here's one of the leaves from that portion of the vineyard where we covered 70%. No disease, no problem here. So, yep, pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Now, how about 50% coverage? When we look at the leaf surface, you can see a lot of that leaf, that bright orange color is the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll autofluoresces. So when you have a UV lamp and you um, put the um, UV lamp up, you'll see where uh, the there's absolutely no coverage. On that surface, your chlorophyll is shining through. We do have 50% of that leaf surface covered, but there's a lot of spaces where the spores of the disease-causing fungus, botrytis, can find food to germinate and grow, where it can cause infection in that leaf surface. And here we are two weeks later, that's botrytis. There is botrytis, very narrow hyphae, clear, colorless hyphae. And you can see where the leaf surface is just covered with the botrytis. What did those leaves look like two weeks after in the part where we only covered this leaf surface by 50%? We got plants that had we applied this earlier in the summer, we would have killed the plants. Luckily, we waited until fall. So you, there are some places where the plant is still photosynthesizing. <laughs> but these plants are going to lose all their leaves. And, you know, it was three feet between this section and the part that was 70%. Three feet. And we're losing the leaves over here, not a leaf lost over there. So here's the critical point. You've got to cover your leaves at least 70%. We've got to get this kind of coverage. If we're only looking at 10%, we barely could get this leaf into the laboratory to take a picture of it. And I can't show you any of the leaves from the just water applied part of the vineyard because all the leaves were gone. They were flying in the wind. <laughs> and of course, you know, what did the vineyard owner say at that point? So am I going to have a problem with botrytis next year? You look at all the botrytis you just put into my vineyard. Uh, what are you going to be doing about this so it's not going to be a problem? Don't worry. We're going to come out and we're going to apply compost tea. He's never had a botrytis problem since that time. Or mildew or insect pests because we kind of, we, we treat this guy right. Because um, we kind of did a job on his vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> so when to apply, you know, soil drenches in the spring? And at harvest. So two times you would put on an extract. You know, if, if the compost isn't really great, 20 gallons per acre. If it's really pretty good, um, one gallon per acre. Take a look at your biology. Make sure you get it on the seed. So come springtime, make sure your seeds are covered with this really good biology. When we're dealing with uh, crop systems, annual plants. We then want to spray a compost tea in the first year during the transition. We're going to spray at the first true leaf stage, about a month later at the pre-blossom stage, about a month later after post-blossom. We don't want to interfere with your bees uh, for um, pollinating your plants. And bees don't do well if you've got flowers filled with water. So we just don't spray during that time. So uh, annuals, uh, when we're dealing with this transition, uh, with perennials, we're going to apply at uh, Budswell because that's where most of the fungal diseases actually colonize your leaf and your bud. So you have to be out there right at the beginning of the growing season. So right now here in California would probably be the time you'd be wanting to get that first application of compost tea out to protect your uh, fruit, to protect your leaves. Uh, and then monthly until you don't have a disease danger. 
If you have um, leaf curl, so peach leaf curl, any of that, um, you don't have to be applying right now if that's the only disease problem that you've got. Um, you wait until you see the leaf starting to curl. Go out and spray. Takes care of the tephrina. Tephrina causes leaf curl. It is the biggest wimp on the planet. <laughs> so just a little bit of good biology deals with that. Now, uh, mildew, oh, you better be out there right now saving your buds from that mildew, getting the whole plant covered above ground. May at once... We get the proper biology in the soil, then you don't have to do the above ground applications anymore. Because as soon as your soil has all this good biology, all those cute little flying things land on the soil and then come up and land in your tree and they will spread that biology for you. So you don't have to be doing that. Where did we put the tea in this picture? Uh, Root systems on these grasses are going down 8 to 10 feet. Root system on these grasses was about two inches. And we got to build structure, get the root systems down there, and then you don't have to ir- irrigate. Um, potato land, we've done a lot of work. Grass seeds, I have an experiment, but um, yeah, I don't have time. 